everyone! Today I'm here to share all of the books that I have acquired in the past few months since I did my fall book haul. Normally I would wait to do this until closer to the end of the season. I tend to do mine seasonally. Winter is definitely not over yet, but I wanted to do this now because I have acquired quite a few things because of Christmas and me buying myself things after Christmas and also just my general acquisitions and being sent things by publishers and also my birthday is in February. And I imagine there will be quite a few books, at least of my own purchase, during that time, if not gifts as well. So I'm going to be doing a separate birthday-related book haul when the time comes for that. So I wanted to get this out of the way now, or otherwise things are just going to be ridiculous and kind of embarrassing. Kind of divided things into general categories based on the kind of book or how I acquired it. The first thing I want to talk about is Book of the Month Club. I have no affiliation with Book of the Month Club. I just really like their service and have been a subscriber for several months. Uh, I have fallen terribly behind on keeping up on my Book of the Month Club books though, and I should try and catch up because I have there's three or four that I haven't read yet. So working on it. But the ones that I've acquired in the past couple of months are, firstly, Swing Time by Zadie Smith. I wanted this because I've been wanting to read a Zadie Smith for a really long time, and I just haven't yet. So this is the only Zadie Smith that I own, and I'm not sure if this is the best place to start with her work, so I'd love advice on that, if I should hold off and read one of her earlier works first, or just jump in with Swing Time. Basically, Zadie Smith's name sold me on it, so I don't know much about the plot. I know that it involves dancing, um, particularly swing dancing, I would imagine, and friendship. I also listened to a recent Fresh Air with Terry Gross, who interviewed Zadie Smith, and they read an excerpt from this book and the writing was really beautiful and it made me want to read this all the more. So I would love to know if this is a good place to start. I also have Pull Me Under by Kelly Luce. I have actually read this one already. I read it in December and I did enjoy it, but I have complicated feelings surrounding it. It just wasn't what I was expecting it to be. It, it begins with a young girl growing up in Japan and she is terribly bullied. And one day she snaps and murders her bully with a letter opener. And this deals with the consequences of that, both short and long term, but mostly focuses on her as an adult and quite removed from the event. I haven't reviewed it, but if you are interested in hearing more of my full thoughts, I would love to do a review, so just let me know if that is something that would be interesting to you. And then this month, for January, I was really thrilled to see that they had a short story collection because I've been a subscriber for five or six months now and it's not something that I'd ever really seen before or at least hadn't noticed. So I of course picked it because I'm really into short stories right now and it was Homesick for Another World by Atessa Mashvi. She wrote Eileen which was nominated for the Man Booker Prize last year and that didn't super interest me but I am interested in this I've heard that the short stories are really disgusting. That's pretty much all I know about it. But I've heard that her writing and the pacing of Eileen might have lent itself better to a short story, so I'm intrigued to see what they're like and make an opinion for myself because I just have no idea. And also, as a little bonus goodie this month, everyone who got a January book of the month also got a copy of The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn, which I haven't read yet. I've read all three of her novels and thoroughly enjoyed them all. Gone Girl is still my favorite, but um, I am interested to read this. Next, I'm going to talk about the books that I received for Christmas. I received a couple of books that I had already read, um, but I had on my wish list just because I wanted to own physical copies of them. The first being The Argonauts by Maggie Nelson, which I'm definitely going to reread. Maybe not anytime soon, but definitely sometime in the future, because this was one of my favorite books of last year. I absolutely loved it, but I made the mistake of listening to it on audio, and it was a really enjoyable experience. It was read by Maggie Nelson herself, and of course she did a great job. But but there were so many points where she would say something so profound. I wish I could highlight the sound wave so I could, could remember it and come back to it later, but um, the bookmarking system on the Audible app just isn't super helpful for me, and I probably would never revisit any bookmarks I made. So I need the physical copy so I can tab and highlight and underline and make notes because this book really begs for that. This is part memoir, part literary theory, part poetry, stream of consciousness. It's really hard to describe, but it's broken up into sections like this. So each paragraph is kind of a different train of thought. And Maggie Nelson explains things about motherhood and having a partner who is gender fluid and her life and sex and experience. And yeah, I, I really loved her writing style. I hope to read more of her stuff, but I do want to reread this too. The other thing that I got that I'd already read, that but I really wanted my own copy of, was Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. I read this before the movie came out, so I don't know how long ago that was, but I'm pretty sure I was in elementary school, and I remember really enjoying it, but 
couldn't really accurately rate it on Goodreads just because I have no real memory of how I felt about it or really even the plot, but it was a really enjoyable reread. I ended up actually listening to the audiobook as a reread, which was really, really fun. I am glad to have my own physical copy just because this is one of my favorite childhood books and I think it is really nice to revisit. Now I need to watch the movie again because I don't think I've seen the movie since it was in theaters, so like. 10 plus years ago, and I would love to do a comparison to the movie and the book. Not for booktube, just for me personally. I would love to see how they differ and which one I prefer because I remember as a child being very adamant that the book was better, but I don't know where that really comes from or if it's accurate. My partner's siblings were very kind to give me a couple of books. So one of his brothers gave me Geek Love, which was straight off my wish list, and I really want to read this. I'm very excited about it. Um, I know very little about it, and since I mentioned it in a video I made recently, a bunch of people have, have spoken up and said that they really enjoyed it and would recommend it. And I'm hoping to buddy read this with Vanessa over at Chbosky soon, so that will be fun, and I'm looking forward to that. I, and also, I was so thrilled to see this. This is The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry, and I honestly have no idea how they picked this for me because I don't think it was on my wish list, and I have no clue how they would know that I want it, but I'm really grateful that they selected it for me because I desperately wanted this after seeing it at the top of so many best of lists last year, and it just is a beautiful book. It's got these gilded flowers on it. I honestly don't remember the plot right now, but I am very, very excited for it. It was a delightful surprise. And then lastly, from Christmas gifts, I got a couple of folio editions. If you don't know, the Folio Society is a group that publishes these very special editions of certain books. They're naked hardbacks in their own sleeve, and I think usually the editions are all illustrated as well. So I already had a copy of Charlotte's Web by E.B. White, but I got two more to add to my collection. The first is The Princess Bride. So this is what the sleeve looks like and the spine, and then you pull it out. This is what the cover looks like. It's a naked hardback. It's really, really beautiful. And then on the inside, it has illustrations. It's just laid out in a very cool way. You can tell clearly that some of these illustrations were inspired by the film, which is great and I love it. I have read The Princess Bride before, but not for a really long time. So I would love to read this and I'm very glad to have it. And I also got Disgrace by J.M. Coetzee who I believe is the author that wrote The School Days of Jesus, which was also nominated for the Man Booker Prize last year, but I haven't read anything by him. This is what this one looks like, and this is what some of the illustrations look like inside. So this is a book that I had never heard of and know nothing about, and there's no uh, dust jacket or anything, so I can't read the summary, but I might just go into it blind. It's very cool to have as a physical object regardless, um, and I'm very happy to have them. Now I'm going to move on to all the books that I have bought myself recently. A lot of these I also just kind of picked up at di different times. I didn't buy these all at once. These are things that I've acquired over the past two months or so. So as I was putting all these books together, arranging them into categories, I noticed a trend that I was not conscious of at the time, but makes sense. I just apparently am very interested in starting new series right now. So I have quite a few first and second books in series. The first are Planetfall and After Atlas, and both of them are by Emma Newman. I read the first in her fairy series. I don't remember the name of the series exactly off the top of my head, but I, I read the first one in that series. I thought it was fine, but I was never really compelled to continue forward. But I'm hoping her sci-fi is more for me. I think it will be. I've heard really great things from a lot of different people. From what I know of the series, Planetfall focuses on a ship full of people who are going to a different planet, and that's pretty much all I know about it. And then I think After Atlas is dealing with the people who were left behind after the ship called Atlas left. Uh, and I think that the protagonist may be related to one of the characters in this book, but I'm not entirely sure. I haven't read either of them yet, so I can't say for sure, but that's, I think, what it's about. And I'm, I'm intrigued to get to these, because I haven't read any sci-fi in a while. And then I also picked up several beginnings to fantasy series. So the first is The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. I'm really interested in this because I read something somewhere about how Ken Liu wanted to write a fantasy series that drew from Chinese tradition rather than medieval tradition. Um, because a lot of fantasy series have a very medieval setting, and he wanted to draw on one that was more like uh, medieval China and Chinese history and culture and tradition. So I thought that that was a really interesting concept, and I've also heard great things about Ken Liu, so I am very excited about this one. I also picked up the first two books in the Fairyland series. I read the first one last year and really, really enjoyed it, but never picked up with the series, and I think part of the problem was that I just didn't own any of them. and. 
I knew it was something that I wanted to buy rather than get from the library and I had gotten this one from the library the first time so I wanted to own them basically is what I'm trying to say. I wanted to buy them so I bought the first two. I hope to reread this one and then pick up with the next book in the series and then hopefully continue on and finish it sometime soon. And I also wanted them to all be in matching editions. I think that was another motivator for me so now that they're all in paperback or at least hopefully will be but by the time I get to them all I will have a matching set. That's all I really want. And then I also picked up the first two books in the Broken Earth trilogy. So I have The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin and The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. And I've already read this and I recently reviewed it, so if you want to know my thoughts on it, you should check them out. And then this is the sequel, which I haven't gotten to yet. Uh, I'm holding off for a little while. This might be something that I read in the spring or summertime leading up to the release of the third and final book in the trilogy. I don't want to have to wait too long, so I'm going to space out the books a little bit so I can get excited for the third one. But if you're curious, I thought the first one was brilliant and then I immediately bought this. Like I put the book down and then I picked up my phone and I bought it on Amazon right after I finished. Change of pace, I have a couple of poetry collections. First being Milk and Honey by Ruby Cower. This I just finished. I read it over the course of two or three days. I didn't want to read it all in one sitting, but it went pretty quick, so I didn't want to draw it out too long either. This is a poetry collection, the first that I've read in many, many years. I haven't really read any poetry since college, and I, one of my goals this year is to try and read some poetry. So this was the first step toward that. This is a very popular and well-known poetry collection, so you probably have heard of it already, but if you haven't, Ruby Cower is an Indo-Canadian author. She does a lot of spoken word, I think, and this is a collection of her poetry that deals a lot with heartbreak and loss and sexual assault, so it definitely is triggering, but there also are some really hopeful and inspirational poems about healing and growing that I connected to as well, so I like this. And then, similar vein, poetry about sexual assault, I have The No You Never Listened To by Maggie Royer, which I found out about because of Amanda over at Amanda Center. She loved and raved about this poetry collection last year, and it sounded like something that I would be interested in. This is about the before, during, and after sexual assault, I think specifically focusing on the after, both the healing and also the blame and the guilt that uh, victims feel. So uh, this will be horribly terrible and really trying, I'm sure, but I'm, I am interested in getting to it soon. I have one graphic novel, which is called A Girl on the Shore by Inio Asano. I read another one of his last year, and now, of course, the title is escaping me. It was very confusing. It was non-linear, and non-linear stories are especially hard to follow when you're basically trying to put pictures together. I mean, there was dialogue as well, but it's a lot harder to follow when there is little text. So that was a little bit tough for me, and I don't think I fully understood the plot, and I think I would benefit from rereading it, but he is extremely famous, well-known in Japan, and has a lot of different graphic novels. So I decided to pick up another one of his just to see if it would be more for me, see if I can get on better with something of his. Not that I disliked what I read of his, I just didn't love it. This cover drew me in. I know nothing about the plot, but I do know that it is quite adult. It came wrapped in plastic, and probably for good reason, because as I was flipping through, I saw a lot of nudity. Um, so be warned, this is quite graphic, and I'm sure it was wrapped in plastic to prevent people from just stumbling on giant pictures of penises, because that is what I found when I was flipping through this the first time, so hopefully this is good. I do know it has a lot of nudity in it. That's pretty much all I can tell you. And then I have three novels. Um, I haven't been buying a bunch of novels for myself lately, but I do have three. Uh, the first is The Unseen World by Liz Moore, which I have already read, and I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to do a review. Not entirely sure yet, so if you do want to hear my more full thoughts on this, I would love to do a review. This I enjoyed, but perhaps not as much as some other people. I gave it four stars. This is a story of a girl named Ada. She's 12 or 13 at the beginning of the novel. And it's mostly about her relationship to her father. She has a very unconventional childhood. She's extremely precocious and smart, but she's never gone to school and her father has raised her and taught her on his own. Um, she spends a lot of time in his lab. He's a computer scientist. It's focusing on their relationship, particularly after a certain point where at the end of the first chapter, Ada learns that her father is losing his memory. I also have Glaciers by Alexis M. Smith. I picked this up because what Kelly Reed's 
really enjoyed this and what she said about it made me want to read it. I don't remember exactly what she said, but she loved it. It's also published by Tin House, which is a publisher that I really enjoy. It'd probably be a nice thing to, to pick up if I'm feeling like reading something short and quick. And then I also have Night Waking by Sarah Moss, which I bought because I loved the title zone. And this is one of her earlier works that is the first in a loose trilogy. I have already started it already. I'm about 50 pages in or so. The story of a woman named Anna, and she is trying to finish her book. She's an academic, but she's really struggling to because she is also the primary caretaker of their of her two children. Her her husband is not a very active father, um, and she is largely responsible for taking care of the kids. And it's not a task that she really enjoys very much, or or thinks is very rewarding. So right now, so far at the beginning of the novel, it's a lot about the stresses and and pains of child rearing, a lot of the downsides not the rose-colored glasses version of raising a child, as she tries to struggle to finish her academic work. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. The writing is great. I also have two short story collections that I bought for myself recently. I'm not going to talk about them a lot because they are widely known here on booktube, but the first is Sweet Home by Karis Bray, and the second is By Light We Knew Our Names by Anne Valente. I bought them because most people that I know that read short stories here on booktube have read and really enjoyed them. So I added them to my growing collection of short stories that I haven't read yet, um, but I hope to get to them sometime soon. And then lastly, I have all the books that I've been sent by publishers. I'm pretty sure uh, all of these were sent to me by Tor. Um, I reached out to them and was just curious to see what they would send me, and they sent me a bunch of stuff. Um, so the first thing that, that I got was The Dream Quest of Velvet Bow by Kaige Johnson. I read Fudoki by Kaige Johnson last year and really enjoyed it, so I was eager to see this come in the mail, but I don't really know what it's about, and I've heard that you perhaps need to read work by H.B. Lovecraft, that this draws a lot of its inspiration from, and I don't really know if I want to do that, so hopefully I can read this without the context of that story and still get a lot out of it, um, because I think Hyde Johnson is a great author, but I don't really want to read H.P. Lovecraft in order to get there. I also have another short story collection, which is an anthology called Invisible Planets, translated and edited by Ken Liu, who wrote The Grace of Kings, which I mentioned earlier. This is an anthology of Chinese science fiction. There's a lot of science fiction coming out of China right now, and I haven't read any of it, so I'm eager to hopefully get a sampling of authors that I might be interested in picking up more, because I don't think I've read any science fiction from China and it's really up and coming right now. I also was sent Binti by Nadia Korafor, which is something that I've already read, but I read it on my Kindle, and I'm really happy to have the physical copy, especially because Home, I think, might be out, or it's coming out very, very soon, and I would love to buy that as well. This is a really great sci-fi novella. It won the Hugo and the Nebula, and I would highly recommend it, so you should pick it up if you haven't yet. I also have Everfair by Nisi Shaw. I do want to get to this, but I started it recently and just realized I was not in the mood for it and didn't want to force it, so I am putting it off for now, but I am really interested in it. It is a steampunk novel that takes place in an alternate Congo in which Leopold II and Belgium never really took them over and destroyed the country. Um, they were able to maintain their own autonomy, and I believe they established their own slave trade using steam power because it's steampunk. And I am really curious to get to this. Uh, just haven't yet, but sounds very, very intriguing. I also have three books that all seem to be sort of about resisting the government, which is appropriate for right now. The first is Updraft by Fran Wilde. Not really entirely sure about the context of this world, but the protagonist is a woman named Kirit. She breaks a law and then is forced to work with the government in order to avoid punishment for her and her family and her community pretty much all I know about it. I have Two Like Lightning by Ada Palmer. This is a story that takes place in a world where religion is outlawed, and one of our protagonists is a spiritual counselor, and the other is a convict, and I think that they team up to fight against the government. That sounds intriguing. And lastly, I have Infomocracy by Malka Older. This, I think, would have been really nice to read before the election, but I didn't, so um, I'm hoping to read it soon, but it takes place in a dystopian world where there is no large governing democracy for the whole country, but rather communities are divided into groups of 100,000, I think, and then they have their own micro-democracies, for which they elect their governing bodies. And this says, with power comes corruption. Shocker. So I have to read this, but I am kind of afraid that it will horribly depress me, so I'm a little tentative about it, but I think it will be a really good read, really rewarding. Probably not the escapism that I'm seeking right now, but I do want to get to it soon. Those are all of the books that I have received recently, or ones that at least I remembered. I do try to keep track of all of my acquisitions, at least mentally, but sometimes I can let a couple slip through the cracks. But I'm pretty sure these are all of the books that I've acquired in the past two or three months. Like I said, there will be another haul coming in February when it's my birthday, because of course it is. It's 
my birthday, I'm gonna buy myself some books at least. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on any of these books I mentioned, ones that I should get to sooner rather than later, books that you may want to buddy read with me. If, if you're interested in that, I, I'd love to buddy read some of these and get to them as soon as possible. I'm really excited about all the things that I have, I'm trying to read a lot as much as humanly possible, but somehow the books just keep multiplying. It just happens. I'm gonna have to buy a new bookshelf soon. I have a little pile on the floor over here of books that cannot fit on my bookshelf anymore, which is a bad sign, but I want all the books I currently own, which is a great problem to have, so I'm not gonna complain about it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time.